Um, that's that's always a hard one for me to answer, especially as staff, since some of this will um, play itself out in a formal investigation and is the adjudicatory body in that investigation. But we, generally, what is the rule? Yeah, I well, mean, I'll, I'll walk through, but as, a, as the adjudicatory body, we can't prejudge. Um, what we are doing right now is requiring them to track all costs um, related to ELISO separately. Um, so that if in an adjudicatory proceeding there is a finding of fault, um, there is a known cost um, of the, you know, of the, of the leak out there. And so that includes the relocation cost, um, you know, the, any of the, the mitigation costs to the community directly um, on all of these measures where we're ordering them to spend additional money. Uh, decisions have been very clear that cost recovery is not yet approved. So you're going to try to isolate In costs associated with the incident. Right. And I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to. And then and another thing that's worth noting, so that we're going to try to isolate the costs their costs associated with the incident. Uh, we will likely in the next week or so also be issuing a request to Southern California Edison to ask them to try to isolate their costs. And that wouldn't be to deny Edison cost recovery because they, you know, they aren't culpable here. But again, so that we can track the separate cost. And if we find um, that SoCal Gas, you know, is culpable in this, that we understand the totality of the costs that we have oversight over and not just their costs. There are never any, any, there are always gray lines. There's never any black and white. So, I mean, there will be things that need to be made into the system that account for, that would be a re response to improving the system. And you can argue with that, that the ratepayers should pay for, that should, they shouldn't pay for, that could go either way. But should this come to a number that potentially bankrupts Edison, is that, Something within the purview of the PUC? Yeah. SoCal uh, Gas. SoCal Gas. I yeah, mean, SoCal sorry. Gas. Um, it would be if it came to sorry a point. About, sorry, Edison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it would be if it came to a point where it did bankrupt the utility. I can't begin to spec speculate whether or not these numbers would come anywhere near um, that number. Um, you know, if, if that did, that would start to become a concern um, in how you approach the matter. Uh, you know, a, a, we've been through a bankrupt utility in California before. It is not a uh, and it also requires forward. a bailout. Yeah. Requires a bailout. And that one did. Yeah. Yeah. That one potentially. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I want to thank the panel. Uh, and we're going to move to our second panel. Uh, Colin uh, Cushney is the vice president of energy procurement management with Southern California Edison. You, you've been on my mind. Sorry. <laughs> Roger Schwecki, uh, are you going to you're going to join us? You're you're moving up. Okay, very good. Emily Schultz is uh, the vice president of electric and fuel procurement with San Diego Gas and Electric. We have Bob Tang, the director of utilities of Southern California Power uh, Public Power Authority, and Michael Webster, the executive director of Power System Los Angeles Water Department Department of Water and Power. I'm sorry, and. Um, the idea of this panel is uh, attempting to address on how to meet our summer reliability needs. And just going into, I mean, we heard that uh, most of the gas that's used in the summer is used to power up the, the uh, peaker plants to meet a demand response, given the fact that, you know, a lot of the state, especially uh, the working poor, de depend on gas to prepare their food. I mean, this is uh, related to our food supply, a large reg restaurant industry. We're talking about people that depend on gas to prepare their food, their food supply, in the probably the cheapest fashion. We all agree gas is very cheap, and that's what makes it a, an essential fuel to uh, feed our state and feed visitors to our state. I mean, the r restaurant... Uh, industry, it's hard to imagine a restaurant that doesn't use gas to to power their facility. It's an essential, an essential fuel for California. So as we consider that, we have to balance the the need to provide electricity, which also is uh, you know a, a life and death fuel for a lot of specific people in our state that can't live without electrical supply. So it's a, it's a very difficult 
balance. I mean, we have to we have to understand that both are very very important. So how do we prioritize that? How do we go that into the summer? And knowing that that Aliso Canyon is still accessible for, for I mean that at least uh, allays some fears that there might be brownouts. But now that we know that it, it is available to help uh, provide backup, maybe you guys can can expand on that. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Who wants to go first? I understand you guys haven't organized, or should I? Uh, okay. <laughs> Am I on? There Am I on? Okay, there yeah. we go. I'll, I'll go ahead and start, um, since I was already warmed up from the last panel. <laughs> um, you know, uh, with regard, and there was a, a short presentation that was provided to you, I believe. Uh, I won't go through it, but when you look at it from the standpoint of managing reliability from SoCal Gas aside, uh, we have always looked to enhance flexibility uh, that will meet the changing energy needs of the region. Uh, with the move towards a 33% RPS standard electric side and going to a 50%, how the electric system has been changing. And we've worked with the electric utilities to, to understand what their needs will be on a going forward basis along with the Cal ISO. And we've expanded our communication with the grid operators uh, to understand how their needs are changing and how we can be flexible enough to meet those needs on, on a going forward basis. If you look, and it was mentioned in the last panel, uh, curtailments of last summer, and this was at the end of June and July, even though we had gas curtailments, there was not an electric reliability issue because we were able to work with the Cal ISO <coughs> to say which plants could still operate. So we basically had that curtailment in a particular area that didn't impact electric reliability. That's that communication that we have and have been having with the Cal ISO on a regular basis. Uh, day in and day out when our system gets tight, we basically work with them to understand what their needs are. So we also look at a lot of tools that we're looking to change and they were mentioned in the last one in the action plan, such as moving to use more of a, I'll call it a daily balancing scenario. Uh, we reached a settlement with 22 parties to come up with a scenario that allows that to happen and is still workable for the customers. Uh, we did not want to move forward until the customers understand how they can manage their gas supplies uh, to meet the system needs that we have. So we were able to do that. We've looked at uh, pipelines, installing uh, additional pipelines. We have uh, several applications with the commission in looking at adding pipelines that can help alleviate the need and the, some of the concerns on the reliability uh, from our standpoint. With regard to Aliso Canyon, uh, and I'm responsible for the safety review at Aliso Canyon, uh, and we are working our way through that phases of inspection. Very close to finishing the inspection uh, for the phase one. Uh, we've had quite a few wells that have gone through the phase two of inspection. Uh, but then we have to move forward, uh, and when do we bring that field back on? Once it meets the safety requirements, not only of ourselves, uh, because that's the first step. We have to feel it's going to be safe before we go back in the operation. Then we turn it over to Dogger to say, do you concur? Do you approve that we're safe for operation? Uh, that's part of what uh, SB 380, uh, Senator Pavley's bill, uh, requires. It's the safety review from Dogger, uh, Rule uh, Order 1109. We're moving forward on that basis to get to a point where we have a field that is not only safe, but can be operated in a fashion that can help support reliability. Uh, for this this summer, uh, later this summer. Uh, can we get to that point? Uh, yet to be determined uh, whether we can get to the point where we say we can bring the field back on injection and, and full operation. It is available for operation for withdrawal today, uh, but full operation to be able to meet not only the summer needs, but the pending winter needs that we believe is could be a larger concern. Because winter reliability uh, is our obligation for core customers. That's where our primary obligation is. That's where we basically meet the, the peak demands of those customers. Um, and if you look at the system and how it's operated, there's been days where storage across our entire system has met 75% of the <coughs> demand in Southern California because they're so inefficient without a curtailment. So storage is an integral part on how we operate. So <coughs> we look at that and... and critical for us to be able to have a field that's operating for this. And summer. you're saying that here, despite what has happened, that you can make Aliso Canyon work, or continue to work as a storage facility? 
Yes, we believe so, and we continue to move in that direction. Uh, we have the safety review process, which we believe will create wells that are safe, have been inspected and validated that they're safe, uh, and the field itself can then come back to operation once you either make them a well safe or you basically plug uh, and isolate that from the reservoir and make it not experience the reservoir pressures. Okay. So again, our obligation is core customers. Uh, we're looking, obviously, the concern about this summer, uh, but also on a going forward basis, the winter coming up uh, for those core customers. So with that, uh, I'll answer any questions you might have after the rest of the panelists have their opportunity. Okay. okay. Um, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm Bob Tang. I'm with the City of Riverside Public Utilities. Today, I am here to represent uh, Southern California Public Power Authority, SCAPA. Uh, as a way of introduction, SCAPA is a joint powers agency of 11 uh, municipal utilities and one irrigation district. Obviously, LADWP is the largest member. They are represented today on their own right. Uh, Imperial Ir Irrigation District is the largest irrigation tr district of, of the nation. Uh, within SCAPA family, we also have one of the, the smallest members and the smallest utility, municipal utility in California. Um, I have to say, SCAPA members were fully embraced with the state energy policy. RPS, we are not behind. In fact, we're to some extent, some of us and um, uh, are leading the pack. As an example, uh, the city of Riverside, this year we're, at, we're going to be at 30% RPS, and within five years, we're probably at close to 40%. So we're well on our way to 50% by 2030. So long-term energy objective of the state, we're fully embracing it. Today, we're talking about the transition to that decarbonized future that we all strive for. Um, in the transition, I have to say that um, SCAPA members, we still rely uh, fairly, you know, uh, natural gas fuel generation is still a fairly important part of our resource portfolio. More specifically, in the summertime, in the hottest days of the summer, uh, some of the members, um, we have to run our local gas generation to keep the lights on. Uh, because of that, the current unavailability of Aliso Canyon is great concern to all SCAPA members. Uh, I want to give uh, more two specific z examples of how Aliso Canyon might impact the electrical utility in different manner. Uh, starting with City of Riverside that I, you know, I'm here for in part. Uh, Riverside, um, we have what we call local electrical equipment constraint. We're interconnected with Southern California Edison Company. Edison provides import capability into Riverside. Uh, as an example, Riverside's summer peak that we're projecting this year is 600 megawatts, but our import capabilities as constrained by Edison's equipment is only 560. But for the fact we have some local natural gas generation, uh, the only alternative for us is to have very severe demand site management, which we do have, or we have to resort to rolling blackout. That's, you know, that's the reality we're facing uh, some of us are facing. Uh, the city of Pasadena also has similar constraint, import constraint. At certain level of their demand, peak demand in the summer, they must run their local gas generation to keep the lights on. That's the reality, despite all the, all the stuff that we've done locally to mitigate that. Um, therefore, uh, is with this heightened sense of concern that the SCAPA fully support the measures as, as proposed in the Aliso Canyon Action Plan. More specifically, there are six measures that we fully support that we give very high importance. Uh, one, for sure, everybody already mentioned is whenever feasible under emergency conditions, 
the current, avail uh, current available gas in the storage, at least Canyon storage, should be used under emergency conditions to keep the lights on. I'm very pleased to hear that there is, appears to be a general consensus that that's going to be the case. Uh, the second measure that we fully support that we, uh, is because we're dealing with a temporary issue, in our view, that the efficient completion of the, all the safety reviews of the wells and to safely, uh, safely restore some capability of using a lethal canyon for the, uh, for, for in the near future is still a fairly important thing for us to keep in mind. Third, I'm also very encouraged to hear uh, here around the table today that the gas and electrical coordination for the summer and going into the winter, winter is very, very important. Uh, we hear er, in earlier panel that one of the major issue is the supply and demand balance on the gas side that may impact the electrical side. Unless so-called gas and the grid operator, uh, Cal ISO and, and, and the LADWP, they have unfettered communication at all times. Um, we must have that so that everybody knows the conditions of the grid that's under operation so we can anticipate problems. That's very important. Um, we talked about uh, what do we do in the worst case whereby gas curtailment needs to be called. Uh, as I expressed uh, earlier, that the impact uh, to electrical customer depending on the circumstances, may not be equally impacted. Some customers may be disproportionately impacted. So the allocation of scarce resource under those circumstances uh, is very important, and we need to have a frank discussion amount all the parties involved, so-called gas, LEDWP, and ISO. Uh, promotion of gas and electric, electricity conservation message is a given. This summer, demand side management programs as well as energy conservation will, will have to be in place to greatly assist to keep the lights on this summer. I'll give you an example, um, demand response. Riverside, historically, we already have a demand response of 10 megawatts under our Power Partners program, basically our largest customers, that to the extent there is a contingency in the system that requires us to reduce load. Currently, we have 10 megawatts of our large customers that are willing to help out before anybody else. As I speak today, we're introducing programs to expand that to double that program. We have very limited time to get there, but we're committed to do that. That's what it takes. Despite all that, I think there is realization, I think, uh, of the previous panel and perhaps folks around this table is that the Aliso Canyon problems that may be, may be caused by Aliso Canyon this summer is potentially much greater than what we can do individually, locally, in terms of energy conservation demand program, at least for this summer. So we have to come to a realization that um, we got to do a little bit more in terms of coordination to anticipate, to minimize, to mitigate the potential impact. Um, with that, I will, um, I will just say we had a lot of discussion in the past several months with so-called gas with Cal ISO with LEDWP in a coordination, uh, coordinated fashion. Uh, SCAPA, we're reasonably comfortable that everybody realizes that we're in this together. We got to coordinate. What SCAPA would like to uh, basically ask is that to the extent we can enhance that coordination before summer comes about, which is fairly near to us, you know, perhaps less than a month away, that the more discussion, 
the more coordination, more concrete things in terms of operating procedures that we can put on the table, that we all have general understanding and clear agreement on how we execute the plan. Um, that will go a long way, in our view, to, to mitigate, to help us through the summer at a minimum. With that, um, I'm open to questions from the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, okay. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name's, can you hear me okay? Yeah. My name's Emily Schultz, and I'm the Vice President of Electric and Fuel Procurement for SDG&E, San Diego Gas and Electric. I lead the team that's responsible for acquiring energy and capacity to serve our customers, and this includes the procurement of natural gas for all of our electric generation facilities, and therefore, we are a market participant like all other electric suppliers. Um, before I address the steps we are taking to ensure reliability and effective communication to our customers as a result of the action report and the findings in the action report last month, I would like to begin briefly highlighting our concerns about our ability to deliver reliable power to our customers this summer. Reliable gas supply, as you've heard, is essential to reliable electric supply and it de ultimately impacts the delivery of energy to our customers. While the recent reports focus on reliability impacts in the LA Basin, um, as you've heard us today, had this conversation today, the interconnection of the gas and power grid in California means that SDG&E customers may also be called upon to conserve if there are constraints on the system. So SDG&E's electric and fuel procurement um, is a non-core gas customer. Our non-core gas customers consist mainly of large industrial and commercial customers plus electric generation. <coughs> sdg &E, we don't have much large industry in San Diego, so the biggest user of natural gas in our service territory is electric generation, roughly 42%. Um, while sdg &E leads the industry in the delivery of clean renewable energy, where roughly 33% in 2015 will be at 40% by 2018, um, natural gas supply is still critical to continued electric reliability. Of serious concern to SDG&E are the findings in the technical reports um, regarding energy deliveries to our customers possibly in being interrupted should there be a gas curtailment to non-core or electric generation. Uh, simply stated, it states that a choice may have to be made between letting more gas stay within LA Basin to preserve operating pressures versus sending natural gas south to San Diego. So what does that mean for us? Because of this, my team is continuing to evaluate all options available to us as market participants um, to protect our gas supply to our generation facilities and looking for options for uh, alternative natural gas procurement to help maintain a re electric reliability. As you know, and as you heard today, the KISO um, ensures bulk electric system stability and electric supply, and we, sdg &E has been and will continue to be responsive to any directives that are from them. We believe the ISO will make every effort to balance reliability concerns and operate resources in a cost-effective manner. However, based on the various market rules and mechani mechanisms that are in place to ensure reliability in LA Basin, we do share concerns that being responsive to any directives could create the potential for increased cost to our customers. Um, the second item I would like to cover is what sdg &E is doing to ensure reliability and effective communication to our customers. Our company works hard uh, all year long to ensure that energy supplies meet our customer needs, and, and this year is no exception. We are continuously improving our reliable power grid, something that we take very seriously, and these efforts have awarded us the distinction of being the most reliable utility in the West for the past 10 years. We don't take this for granted, and we're working very hard every day to maintain this distinction for another decade. We're currently working with the utilities and the agencies that are represented here today to develop and launch a coordinated conservation campaign that will um, kick off in early June. SDG also plans to hold a local news conference with the California ISO, as we have done every summer, to increase awareness of the summer situation and provide tips to our customers on how they can enroll in demand response programs like our Reduce Your Use program. Our customers have done an excellent job in the past to both reduce their energy use as well as act upon any ISO flux alerts. And we will continue to ensure that there's effective widespread communication in order to garner the necessary results if it is, if it is the need to conserve is actually called for. And last, I would like to dis discuss why careful coordination, as you've heard from others on the panel today, why careful coordination and collaboration will be particularly important, especially for the benefit of our customers as well as other customers in the Southern system. With as many as 14 days this summer that could 
potentially limit electric <coughs> ser electricity service to our customers in Southern Orange County and San Diego. It is critical that we continue to remain closely uh, coordinated with the California ISO to minimize impacts and effectively communicate to our customers. Um, sdg &E was engaged in the recent uh, CAISO stakeholder process that you heard Mr. Mark, Mark Rothleader from the ISO mention in the process on electric and gas coordination, and that focused on the need to address some of those current mechanisms that are in place swiftly. Um, increased coordination between the ISO and SoCal Gas is going to be essential to best manage the potential for gas interruptions this summer, uh, with timely notification and transparency to all market participants, with transparency being critical. We have a good his SDG &E, we have a good history of collaboration, and we're going to continue to do our part to avoid any interruptions and have our cust keep our customers' lives powered with clean, reliable energy. And beyond that, I don't have any other comments, but I'm available to address questions. Thank you, Mr. Kushney.